Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna cover three main types of composition so you can start taking better photos today. If you get something out of this video, hit the like button and smash that subscribe button. Without further ado, let's get on the computer and get into this. All right guys, so the first of the three major composition types we're gonna look at is leading lines. And this is the first image we're gonna use for that. And can you take a guess on what the leading lines in this photo might be? Well, if you guessed these lines on the road, you would be correct. But you could also say the sides of the bridge. So leading lines are elements in your image that lead your viewer's eye through the scene. These lines can be natural, such as rivers or walkways, or man-made, such as roads, buildings, or fences. But by using leading lines in your image, you can create a se sense of depth that lead your viewer's eyes through the image and or into a subject. This technique is in particular useful for landscape and cityscape photography, thus me choosing a cityscape to start. So as you can see, these lines lead you through the subject, through the photo rather, and towards the subject, which would be the city in the background. Now, in this particular example, if you're like me, you kind of lose the leading lines somewhere in here, then you go to this, and then from here you explore. But as a, as a whole, this is one of my favorite images I've taken. Um, this is actually from my hometown of Pittsburgh, so if you didn't know that, now you do. The next example I want to look at is a pretty simple image. Uh, I do believe this was just a walking around Pittsburgh and snap this picture because I kind of liked how it looked. Um, not one of my favorite pictures, but does demonstrate leading lines rather well. Just you have these lines through here with the walkway and everything takes your eyes towards in this photo would be towards this fountain uh, or the building, whatever you whatever you'd like to choose as your subject for this one. But it does kind of guide your eyes through the photo down towards the back end. My last example I want to do for leading lines is a little different than normal, but one of my favorite examples. So this photo was a light painting photo that I took a few years ago. None of this is composite, so I didn't add this in post. This is all done with some lights, steel wool back here, and then just some very still models. You can see a little bit of shadowing, but that's not the point of this. Anyways, so the leading line in this is gonna be our light here or we just kind of wave, wiggle, and bring ourselves to our subject. My favorite parts about this leading line photo is one, it's not typical. So usually, and with the previous examples, you have a straight line that comes in from the frame and extends through the subject. With this one, obviously your line's not very straight. It wiggles all over, but still ends up leading you to the subject. And second is it's not a solid element in the picture. It's something that we introduced with the light with the intention of leading to the subject. Now, the next of the three rules that we're covering today is going to be the rule of thirds. The first example we're going to use is this photo. So in this particular photo, you can see that I cropped in a decent bit on this one. And the reason being is to put my subject on these intersecting points of the rules of third. So the rule of thirds in simplistic terms is dividing your image up into these lines, which would be thirds for your photos, both horizontally and vertically. And then you put your subject along one of these lines or at the intersections of some of them. Doing this typically creates a balanced and visually interesting image um, and is one of the most popular composition techniques used in landscape and also in portrait photography. And we'll cover a portrait example here in a minute. But for this one, it's a macro shot. Cropping where we are puts our, our subject along two intersecting points and then gives us a good bit of negative space in this image as well. Another example of this would be this flower picture. And again, you can see I cropped in a decent bit, but the reason I cropped in here is to show that we have two thirds of our image as the flower, 
and one third as negative space. So as it falls off here in focus, we fade into our background and drop off. The last image I want to cover is a more of a portrait shot, self-portrait, in case you didn't know that was me. But for this image, I have myself cropped in, and I, I actually shot this with the intention of being on this third. Um, but it also did kind of just work out, right? <laughs> uh, anyways, so in this image, you can see that my eyes are at the exact intersecting point here, and my waist is at the other intersecting point here, keeping me in this little bit of an L here, right? So another way of looking at the rule of thirds in this, this photo that I didn't intend but worked out rather well is we have our foreground and some of the grass elements in the photo in the bottom third. In the second third, we have some of the brighter parts of the sky and some of the darker parts of the clouds. And then in the top third, we have the blue sky and some of the clouds as well. This kind of separates the image pretty interestingly into three different sections. And having myself on the intersecting points, I believe, kind of draws your attention to everything. Me at first, and then through the rest of the image as you look at it a little bit longer. In the last major composition we're going to look at is symmetry. Symmetry is a composition technique that involves creating balance in your image by aligning elements in your scene. This can be achieved by using natural symmetry, such as reflections in water, or by arranging elements in your scene to create a symmetrical composition. This is often used in architecture and still life photography. Our first example of this is in architecture. So this is one of my favorite buildings to photograph in Pittsburgh. I'm not gonna tell you which one, you gotta find that for yourself. But with the, the crop on this photo, the goal was to have this element in the middle, splitting it, and then having it equal both horizontally and vertically, right? So we have two sections on each side, thus splitting us on each horizontal plane. And then if you split it, you split it horizontally, each vertical plane matches as well. So our line is pretty straight across here with the same amount of both or of all panels and same down here. We're split evenly this way with equal sides of lower vertical. This particular example is symmetrical both vertically and horizontally. This next photo is split down the middle vertically and both sides kind of go through this image. This could also be considered a leading line image because it kind of draws you through the through the image, but it's also very symmetrical in the fact that in this particular building we have the same design on both sides, as well as the reflection of the opposite side through this image. The final example I want to look at with symmetry is this photo, and mostly because it's an example of very non-typical symmetry. So in this example, we're not split perfectly vertically or perfectly horizontally. We're split kind of at an angle, right? So this element splits our photo. Then we add a subject to one side, which technically speaking, throws off the symmetry, right? But using this technique also brings a lot more interest to this photo. So we split our image pretty much in half. It's a little off, but pretty much in half. Add the subject and then keep the backgrounds of both sides as symmetrical as possible. So that allows us to keep the interest in the photo while adding a subject in kind of an interesting way. That's all I got for the three major rules of composition, and I will see you in one minute. Well guys, those are three different types of composition. Start using those today, and you might just start taking some better photos. Not that they weren't before, but maybe a little bit better now. Anyways, uh, <laughs> drop a comment. Which one of those three composition types is your favorite? And if yours didn't make this video, what is your favorite kind of composition? Also drop in the comments, what kind of content do you guys wanna see? I wanna make some content that helps you. So if there's something specific you're struggling with or you wanna know a little bit more about, comment it so I can make some videos. Who knows? You might just be the inspiration for the next video. Until next time, I appreciate you. Peace.